It's time for AMD's monstrosity. Tesla finally opens up and is vulnerable. And Intel confirms a nice GPU. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So drink your coffee, eat your Wheaties, buckle in, strap on, and get ready for talking about AMD and the fact that there are new indications out there that they have taped out their upcoming Navi 31 GPUs. This is something that's hotly anticipated because this is expected to be AMD's first consumer version of their multi-chip module C GPUs, which would mean that it has two GPUs that have fusion danced together to create one massive behemoth. And some of the preliminary benchmarks that we may have seen or at least heard about being speculated on the internet could indicate that this might be twice the performance of the current generation 6900 XT, which would be absurd, obviously. How would you power that? How would you cool that? I don't even know. It's not necessarily something that I'm an engineer in. But in case you want to see how you could take a 6900 XT and bring it to its knees, you should watch yesterday's video that we released on UFD Tech because I I did just that anyways. We're expecting the 7900 XT or whatever the nomenclature will be to have 15,000 FP32 shading units from 120 compute engines, which just means that this is going to be a big, big boy. We're expecting that this GPU might launch towards the end of next year. So them taping it out right now means that they are likely on track for that release date. Are you excited for AMD's next generation or is it just pain because you're just like, are they even gonna have stock? Is it worth it? Is anything ever going to get back to normal? I know that that conversation comes up a lot as somebody who has personally gone through dark times, my friends. It always feels like there will never be a dawn again, but I trust you as long as you keep trudging through life, eventually things come full circle. I bite you in the ass. Speaking of things coming full circle, let's talk about Lenovo and their rumored ThinkBook Plus, which has a second screen for drawing. And the only reason I'm talking about this, number one, is because obviously it's pretty ingenuitive with them having a full drawing tablet, which is kind of so you don't have to take up your full screen to sketch something that might be on the display. But also when I first looked at this, my initial thought was, wow, why do I have to slide the laptop over just to draw? And then I realized it hit me. For whatever reason, I have ignored this fact. The majority of the world is right-handed and I am a pleb who can't do things like this because I would just be smashing the keys and not enjoying it because of my left-handed nature, which is the same problem that I have with Linus, LTTstore.com and their gosh dang WAN hoodies. Same problem that I had with their previous stealth hoodies. You freaking, the, the, the phone pockets on the right side, they don't have a left-handed version except for they made a left-handed version for me for the stealth one. I still have it, but you, I, they're still right-handed patriarchy still existing. I don't like it. Lenovo, Linus, all the L's. It's left, L, left. It, you, we share a letter. Just make left-handed stop, please. Feel the wrath of the left hand of Burns. But you know what will be left out forever? This new 5D storage technology that was developed by researchers that will allow you to create data that can survive for 13.8 billion years. This is not the first that we're hearing about these disks. The data being etched with lasers that can be safe for up to a thousand degrees Celsius and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's really neat. It was originally demonstrated back in 2013, but the key difference is now that the researchers have found a way to write it with actually reasonable speed. So they were able to write five gigabytes of data onto a single silica glass disc, and it can hold up to 500 terabytes of data, which they said could probably take place in about 60 days or so of writing, which is way faster than the previous amount that they could write by. So this is a good development in the new technology, which is now going to be the next war, all right? 5D laser disc or 5D blue laser disc, okay? Huh? Huh? Which one's Sony versus Microsoft? Who's going to win? And I'll tell you who wins in the world of cryptocurrency. Nobody. It's a zero sum game. Bitcoin down 0.3%. It's $61,300 right now. Ethereum up slightly to be 43.44. And Dogecoin down ever so minusculely to 27 cents. But you know who had a big day? You know who had a big gosh dang thunking day? It was a GameStop. Look at that. It an increase of 9% to close over $200 here on the first of 
November. My goodness gracious, AMC also having a large day, up 4.8% to close at 37.07. Tesla likewise having a large day because of the announcement that they are going to now be sharing their superchargers with other electric vehicles, at least in a demo run over in the Netherlands with 10 different supercharger locations in the Netherlands now being open to this supercharger program. All you have to do is download the Tesla app and click charge your non-Tesla EV, at which point it will let you know that your pricing is potentially higher than if you actually owned a Tesla, they're gonna advertise Teslas to you. And Tesla saying that they're going to monitor the usage and make sure that this does not push out actual Tesla purchasers from being able to use their superchargers and that they're gonna listen to feedback on all of this. And also saying for, you know, EVs that have weirdly placed charging plugs, don't block where you're supposed to be, all right? If you can't do it normally, just don't be here, okay? We don't want your kind. Tesla also launching a level two charger on their home store that now works with all electric vehicles as the J1772 plug, which you can buy directly from Tesla, which is weird because Tesla doesn't have this and most electric vehicles ship with their own plug, but now you can buy a Tesla branded version to charge whatever vehicle you potentially want, I guess. I don't know, it's odd. You know what else is odd? Companies thinking that we care that we're asking them not to track us. This is because of Apple's new Ask Not to Track technology, ATT as it was formerly known, which according to a new report has cost social media companies nearly $10 billion since it rolled out. With Snapchat and Facebook being the most largely impacted by this rollout, obviously Facebook saying, hey, this is not okay, all right? You're, you're killing our business. If we can't track people, then we can't make money. And every, Apple's just like, yeah, well, people do don't want you to track them. So that's why we ask for consent. And Facebook's like, no consent, consent bad. Consent means that we can't make money. I'll let you decide who's the victor there. Also being reported is that Apple is now working on a technology that can call 911 in the event of a car accident based on your iPhone and Apple Watch's data that it receives, saying that it's been taking the data that users have been sending to them and just trying to figure out when is an actual accident happening with about 10 million suspected accidents happening with about 50,000 calls to 911 taking place after that. They're using that data to potentially roll out this technology sometime in the next year. This is obviously not something that's unique unique to Apple, but it's something that is coming to them now, which speaking of not unique to a company, Amazon is not unique to the space race of trying to get internet to everybody, but Project Kuiper is now planning on launching two satellites by the end of next year on a rocket that they haven't even tested yet. So we'll find out whether or not that actually happens. And it also was announced that they're gonna bring these satellites down so that they can be reused and they're not part of the space junk that's up in the sky. And what's down on the computer is usually video games, all right? But in China, Fortnite no longer gonna be happening. God, and by mid-November, the Fortnite Chinese servers are shutting down as of November 15th with the Fortnite website says that the test of the game has come to an end, which is likely part of this strategy to buy the Chinese government to just limit the amount of time that kids are playing video games, recently restricting it to just a few hours a day on the weekends. And this is thought to be just another step towards that. What's another step towards Intel's domination is their new GPUs, all right? You want more GPUs from everybody? Intel's execution unit 448 getting confirmed by their own posts saying that there might be a DG2 448 GPU, which would be the Mac Daddy 512 execution unit version. This is essentially like a 3080 to a 3080 Ti. It's just cut down just a little bit or a 3070 to a 3080, depending on how much they're cutting in, whether or not it's on the same uh, chip design. We'll have to figure all that out once they sell it to us. And I'm not gonna sell you any more hot news, okay? Shops closed. I'll see you tomorrow for more hot news at breakfast. You should check out yesterday's episode where we talked about the fact that Nvidia might be closing up shop. Shops are gone. You can't buy none no more. See you tomorrow.